Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here an unboxing and a review video. So this is a pen that I managed to pick up at the London International Pen Show in October 2019. This has been on my radar for a while now. Uh, I like the Leonardo uh, Officina Italiana Memento Zero pens, but I do find they're on a little bit on the short side, a little bit on the thin side. So I was really glad that uh, Salvatore and Chiro from uh, Leonardo Pens, the Matronis, uh, decided to create a grande version of their, their award-winning pen. So for me, this was a definite buy. And I know a lot of people came up to me after I purchased this pen from my friend John Foy at uh, the pen show. A number of people had come up to me um, throughout the pen show and said... I understand that you bought his only Grande pen that he had, and uh, yes, <laughs> I did. Uh, I was lucky that I do have a VIP pass, so I did get in a little bit earlier than, than most people, and I was able to snap this pen up quite quickly. Um, the uh, provisor was that John wanted to leave his pen on his table for the entire show, but he told me that he wouldn't sell it, and he didn't, and I'm glad that I picked it up. So this is the box that it comes in. It's quite a big box. And I will remove the outer case to show the box that it comes in. And this also has an inner box. So let me remove this case. And you'll see here that this is the box that it comes in. So let me open the box. And you'll see here, first off, it says Leonardo, Officina Italiana. And then it has a bottle of ink, and this is a purple ink and a Leonardo ink. I don't know who this ink is made by, um, but I do like purple inks a lot. Uh, it's 40 milliliters of ink, so it's not a bad size ink about half the size of a diamine 80 mil bottle or 10 milliliters more than a, a plastic 30 mil bottle but there you have it uh, and then you have the pen and this is the pen that i wanted this is the grande version but it's the sand or i've also seen it actually referred to as uh, the spaghetti or spaghettio uh, pen as well so let me just remove the ink and let me shut this down and then zoom in and then we can use that as a backdrop so this is the pen it's a really stunning pen uh, i do like these sort of striated sort of um, patterns that they are picking up on here uh, this really is a stunning pen and it is larger than a regular Memento Zero. And let me just show you that. If I um, pull out one of my others, I have a Hawaii here, which is the standard Memento Zero. And you'll see here that that size is quite different. It's uh, not only in terms of length, but also in terms of the, the girth, the, the diameter. So for me, that is a really nice size pen. Um, so in terms of the cap finial, it just goes to a pointed end like most Leonardo's do. Uh, you have the Italian style roller clip, which is something that you used to see on Omar's pens. Uh, you now actually have three smaller cap bands here. And then you have this other band and it looks as though that that is actually part of the cap, but it's not. It's actually part of the body there. Now, the cap actually tapers out to the cap bands, and then it starts to taper back in again towards this metal band here, and then what is uh, effectively a captured converter knob. So you can remove this, and you can access what is a converter inside the pen. So if I unscrew the pen, I'll show you the nib, and I'll show you the converter. So the nib here is a medium uh, steel nib uh, with a lovely ebonite feed. 
Uh, I decided to go with a steel nib. I could have gone with a gold nib, but I thought I would try a steel nib. I've got a couple of broad steel nibs, and I do like them. And then if I unscrew the body, you'll see here it has the converter, but there's a slight difference to this, and I'll show you. So it has the branding on there, Leonardo, Officina, Italiana, and the wings. But this converter is much larger than a standard com international converter. So this converter is actually glued into the section. So you cannot remove this converter. Um, that was a little strange to me to start with. But they wanted, because this was a larger pen, they wanted a larger ink capacity. And I can understand that. So if you have a look here, uh, you can see that the uh, uh, the sort of piston there, uh, the O-ring is actually quite larger in diameter than a, a regular one. So to me, and you can also hear, it's got a ratchet on it if you try to go too far as well, which is quite nice. Um, for me, this was a little strange to start with that this was glued in place. Uh, I hope it's uh, not going to be an issue long term because uh, glue can fail, especially when it's around ink or if ink gets in sort of around the glue. But I hope it won't. So for me, this pen really is a nice size. So I think let's do some size and weight checks and then we'll do a pen comparison. We'll ink the pen up and we'll do a writing sample. So in terms of size, we are looking at about 152 millimeters in length and the cap is 67 millimeters in length. So that's a large pen for sure. And if I try and stop the pen from rolling away, we'll do a measurement to the tip of the nib or the tip of the tines. And that's 135 millimeters. So it is a, a large pen. And you can see here in the size of my hand that that is quite a large pen. Can I cap the, or can I post the cap? Yes, I can, but it becomes a real wand at that point. It's just maybe a tad back weighted, not enough to make it an issue though. To be honest, I tend to write more like this. So, um, I wouldn't, if I posted it, it wouldn't feel that back weighted to me. Uh, but I know some people write like that, and that might be more back weighted. But for me, this is actually quite a nice weighted pen. Uh, it's not a light pen, though. I think let's do a weight check. So the full weight of the pen, and this is uninked. We're looking at just over 35 grams. The cap, we are looking at just over 10 grams, or just under 10 and a half, depending on how you want to look at it. And then the body is just over 23 grams. So that still is a quite a good weight for me. Uh, I think that that is a weight that most people would be happy with uh, in terms of using a pen. So I think let's do a comparison. So from left to right, we have the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. We have a Leonardo Officina Italiana, and this is a Memento Zero in the Hawaii. We have a Leonardo Officina Italiana, Memento Zero in the Mediterraneo. We have a Pelican M800 Royal Gold Raden. We have the Leonardo Officina Italiana, Memento Zero in the Grand, and this is the sand version. We have a Conway Stewart Churchill with the red stardust. We have a Classic Pens LB5 in the Kauseki. We have an Visconti Opera Master Crimson Tide. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Lava. And we have a Visconti Jacques de Molay Templar. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, I normally would ink this up with a color that would match the pen, but I really want to try this Leonardo uh, purple to see how how that uh, works. Um, so I'm going to open the cap. And strangely enough, the ink has a little bit of a different smell to it, a smell that I'm not used to in an ink. So I don't believe that's a diamine ink. Uh, or a KWZ ink even. Uh, 
So I'm not too sure. So I'm just going to bring the piston down in the converter and I will ink up we've got a fairly full fill out of this pen so let me just wipe it off and I'll show you so you'll see here it's got a fairly full ink filling there put the cap back on the ink and we'll put the body back on the pen. I'm just going to wipe, there's a little bit more ink around the top of the nib there uh, where it goes into the section but other than that I think that's going to be quite nice. So I think let's go and do a writing sample now. So this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana. So let's write this here. So it's a Leonardo Officina Italiana, and it's the Memento Zero, and uh, it is the uh, I'm going to put down here Grande. Is it Grande or Grande? I think it's Grande and it is the sand version. So the ink in here is Leonardo Officina Italiana Purple. And I'm sure this is probably made by somebody else, um, but this is a really lovely dark purple. Actually, reminds me very much of a Diamine Majestic Purple. Um, now this is a medium nib, it's a steel nib, so let me put medium up here, uh, medium and it's a steel nib. Now in terms of line variation, it is a medium nib, it is a steel nib. Can I get a little bit more line variation out of it? I can if I push a little bit harder, but it is a steel nib, so you're not going to get a huge amount of line variation out of what essentially is a steel nib unless it's a still flexible nib now in terms in terms of ink wetness let's have a look it's not a bad ink let's do the vertical pass yeah so it's actually quite a wet ink but it's not too wet you could probably write with this in a journal and it wouldn't take a massive amount of time to dry although saying that these vertical lines are still actually quite wet now um, but I it's definitely not going to be as long as it would take to uh, dry uh, with another nib which is more of a fire hose nib so uh, I think that's wet enough to to be wet but not too wet to be a fire hose nib uh, that I'm actually quite uh, pleased with. The nib actually writes very smoothly. Uh, I'm actually very surprised and to be honest I would say that medium nib writes a little bit more on the broad side but Leonardo do use Bock nibs so that doesn't surprise me. Uh, Visconti use Bock nibs and most of the time the medium nibs write towards more of a broad nib so uh, that to me it doesn't really doesn't surprise me but that is a really nice writing nib uh, I'm really glad actually I picked this pen up uh, really glad that I stole it from under a few people's uh, eyes or noses because uh, I managed to beat them to it uh, but yeah, this is a really nice pen I'm sure that they will be able to pick up some other versions of the sands if they want to I think a few of them have pre-ordered as well with John so I hope that, that that's good and I'm not on somebody's hit list uh, but this is a really stunning pen so I'm really happy to add this one to my collection this actually now makes me want to have more Memento Zero pens from Leonardo uh, in the Grande so uh, although I really do like my Mediterraneo and also my Hawaii I think this is the more better size for me so that's the uh, unboxing and review of the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero 
uh, Grande Sand pen. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.